But anyway, let's start it off by talking about some of the draft picks, D.C. The first one the Saints got was Marcus Davenport, big old guy, 6'5", 260-plus pounds out of uh, University of Texas at San Antonio. Uh, he's a terrific talent, runs a 4.6 uh, in the 40, uh, has great arm size, hand size. 4.5, man, get it right. Uh, 4.6, I hear 4.6, we not sliding them in 10th, well, it was 4.5. Eight, okay, so all right. He had 55 tackles and five, 18, uh, eight, excuse me, not 18, but eight and a half sacks last year in the role for the road runners. And we get him with the first pick. Of course, we traded a fifth round pick of this year and next year's first round draft pick to acquire Marcus Davenport, uh, DC quickly. Thoughts on Mr. Davenport and an uh, uh, impact that he'll have coming up well it's, it's such a big impact i'm gonna try to make it quickly <laughs> right we got a few other couple. <laughs> but uh man uh y'all listen to the show y'all y'all heard us on draft night i'm gonna keep going back to this because when i first heard about it i knew he was good and i was like okay he's gonna be a, a solid player but we both were a little disgruntled about getting giving up that uh extra first round pick on top of the fifth this year to get him but, man, uh, the more I go back and you listen to coaches, uh, you listen to his coaches, you, you study the fact that he looked like Steve Urkel when he first went to college and he turned into Stephon uh, as a big, huge monster. This dude put on 60 pounds of muscle, you know, in college. He looked like complete string bean. And you see this guy go from nothing. Um, he was probably – he wasn't even ba- barely a prospect, like – in, in, in college, like nobody, no teams really wanted him. That's why he went to a small school. And when he probably could have transferred, he stuck with the people that, you know, wanted him, which shows loyalty. And the dude is an absolute phenom, bro. He's a freak of nature. Uh, he beats people based on uh, turning his power into speed. Uh, basically, he just has a bull rush, very few swim moves, stuff like that. But he's so, like, opposing, like, even without – a lot of technique. Every piece of tape I watch on this dude, he's affecting the quarterback. The offensive lineman is in the quarterback's lap pretty much every play he's on the field. Um, they double team him from time to time. Sometimes he gets one on ones, but when he gets one on ones, he's still affecting the quarterback by con- he controls the offense. Right, that's what I said, bro. And he bring him exactly where he want him to go. So this dude, uh, I think on the next level. Touching on one point, let me wrap it up. I know I got to make it quickly. Uh, On the next level, I think Marcus Davenport will be a very big impact player based on this. Every time a piece of tape I watched him, when he played competition that was good, he rose to the occasion. Um, Talking about double-digit sack games, uh, making guys fumble. Um, He scored fumbles for touchdowns. And they basically almost shut out Baylor. Now, if anybody's familiar with college football, Baylor took to the last uh, plays in the fourth quarter to score. I don't think he – I don't know if he got us. He might have got one sack that game. But that whole game, Baylor's offense was tailored towards staying away from Marcus Davenport. Yeah, he and is, y'all know Baylor put up points. Force. He's definitely a force, man. Right. Uh, but he improves with his competition, bro. Senior day, every day he improved. He couldn't beat anybody on the first day of senior day. At the end of the senior day practices, nobody could, could guard him. So I, I, I love it, and I like the fact that he's a true underdog and he's a constantly improving player, and he's very hungry. He wants to be great. So we, we, I think we got a diamond in ne- this guy. Next player is Traquan Smith, third-round selection, pick 27 for the Saints, wide receiver out, 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 wide receiver out of UCF Central Florida, 6'2", 210 uh, for Mr. Traquan Smith. It's pretty quick as well in the 40 full uh, 449 for him in the 40. Had 54 catches, 1,082 yards, and 13 touchdowns in 2017 for Central Florida. Of course, a lot of love was given to the Saints when they were able to obtain Mr. Trey Quan Smith. And Sean Payton was quoted as saying he's he's physical, big, blocks, and has size, strong hands, very competitive, a guy that has grit and toughness. So Sean Payton really likes the guy a lot. He said that the Saints didn't necessarily go into the draft thinking they'll need a receiver, but Smith was clearly a magnet, a grade that stood out above everyone else available at the time. And it's the key why Payton mentioned is a blocking ability because he knows how receivers like Robert Meacham, Dever Henderson, and others earned their key roles in the past. And he fits in the bill 
with some of these guys. He has that speed, that size, that toughness. Uh, there he is, Traquan Smith. Uh, let's get to his uh, breakdown, DC, before the break. Yeah, Traquan is a, it's a speed guy, a guy that gets behind you. Amazing blocker. I think that's what they really uh, like about him. Tay again, if he gets hurt, uh, you know, basically he's getting older. He can't perform. We can plug Traquan right in. Or at least have him play uh, the Brandon Coleman spot while we put Brandon at the three, if possible. Um, Traquan is is a perfect Saints player. I mean, he played in Saints colors in a lot of his uniforms, and uh, he has very good hands. He can he can catch it over the middle. I don't think I don't know how much of that is going to be required of him in our offense because we got Michael Thomas basically locking that up. But um, he's the quintessential Saints player to me. Another hungry guy. We got a lot of guys with that mentality, man. They're, they're hungry, and just like Davenport, um, he didn't start football till late, and he basically was a guy that didn't know anything. He's still learning and steadily improving rapidly. This is this dude's fourth year playing football. <laughs> he's drafted into the NFL, so he's definitely a guy you can continue to work with, has a very high ceiling, and at the rate right now, he can already do a lot. So I think he comes in in the Saints offense, and he, he basically – he shows out, man, when he gets his opportunity because we know we have a loaded receiver backfield, and this guy is a perfect guy to get depth. And we could allow him to sit if he needs to to learn some stuff, or if he's phenomenal, he can come in and play day one. Right, I I, I like his I like his abilities, man. To be quite honest with you, I think he's going to be a terrific player for the Saints for for a long time, and he'll be allowed to be able to be groomed. There's no forced start for him to do anything. The Saints could use him as they please. And he provides depth for that wide receiver position as well, along with the Saints signing Cameron Meredith. Uh, In the fourth round, the Saints go after Rick Leonard, offensive tackle from Florida State. Of course, Rick Leonard, a few years before he was playing on the defensive line, made the switch to offensive tackle to the offensive side of the ball. And key, because a lot of the, the, the coaches there, uh, thought that he probably would be better on that particular side of the ball. And obviously, uh, he was able to Saints found something in, in, in the fourth round. And Leonard, of course, he's huge. You know, he's 6'7", 311 pounds. Uh, his size makes it an incredible asset. He points to a potential. He has a potential ceiling, definitely, no doubt about it. And he was taken there. Uh, but a lot of people project him to go a lot lower. But the Saints seen in him a lot. He was recruited to uh, Florida State as a three-year, a three-star defensive end. Wow. And then he made the, the, the switch over to the de- defensive line where he be quickly became a starting tackle. He made 19 starts, including 13 games in 2017 at Florida State's right tackle. Well, in a selection, you know, he he's just a terrific, a terrific talent there. And, of course, he joins another Florida State member on the Saints squad, Mr. P.J. Williams. Uh, we who we are also hoping <laughs> comes up and shows up. Uh, what's your thoughts on Rick Leonard, the fourth round selection offensive tackle out of Florida State? I ain't got a lot to say on Rick, man, because I think the Saints' track record with offensive linemen speaks for itself. I mean, we hit a few does here or there. You see, uh, a lot of guys don't really pan out to do a lot all the time. But most of the people that we take high, like we took Leonard. I'm trusting in the same staff. I think they really see something in this guy. Not to mention he's 6'7", 311, 311. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, oh, man, he's a specimen, dude. Great run blocker. Oh, that's what we're going to need, especially when Drew Brees' era is over, depending on who we get at quarterback. So I think they're molding him up for the future. We may not see a lot of him this year, but this is a guy that we're definitely going to put on the shelf, and we're going to build up, you know, kind of like Tyron Austin. That is Rick Leonard, man. He's going to definitely provide depth behind Jerron to Shride. Might get a little burn depending on what uh, Tyron Armstead looks like. It's, you know, hopefully he's fully healthy this year. But anyway, we'll get back to finishing the rest of our draft picks on the other side of the break. And also we'll talk about the weakest spot left after the draft and other topics on the other side of the break. Listen to Sports Coma. Big Q and the guys. Stay with us. 